So one of the things I like to do, in addition to collecting, is repairing and restoring old uh, vintage uh, action figures, toys, Transformers, Star Wars, you name it. Uh, just so it happens that I have a nasty, filthy, dirty, old vintage Star Wars figure right here. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna provide some still shots as well. You can see uh, the condition that he's in pre-cleaning, and I'm gonna show you how to restore him. And I, uh, so he looks pretty much mint out of the package. He should, by the, by the end of this, uh, look at least a C9 quality. Uh, everything that you see here has been treated the way I'm going to show you how to treat uh, this guy for restoration. Uh, there's a few, I've seen a lot of uh, how-to guides online, uh, written and video. I think I might have some extra things to offer for that extra touch. Here's the Millennium Falcon um, looking pretty much like it came out the way it came out of the package in 1980. I don't know. I'll probably, again, take some still shots of all these restoration jobs I did. Because I don't know how well this is focusing in the camera. Uh, but this is, if you can't tell in the video, this is this stuff is shiny, shiny clean. Uh, let's see if I can bring the cockpit nice and close. Open the canopy. See some shiny action figures. Pull this guy out. This guy was filthy. Well, I remember when I got this guy. It's Bespin Han. Um, I don't know how effective doing this on video is. I'll leave this guy out of here. Bring the leg down. 3PO, the Vader case. Uh, this thing was nasty. It smelled like cigarettes. It just, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna open this and just show you guys another little something. In addition to cleaning, once you've got all your stuff all clean, if you want to use these old cases, I don't know if you know, I don't know if any of you remember back in the day in the 80s when these were being sold, 70s and 80s, they weren't incredibly popular because they didn't hold your action figures in. They'd, they'd you know, over the box and they'd all suicide out of the out of their slots. Keep them in plastic bags. These snack bags can be bought, you know, anywhere from uh, Walmart to Target, wherever. You know, snack size bags, so not sandwich size, snack size. It's the next size down. Uh, don't keep them in long term in the standard snack bags. Eventually you're going to want to get, uh, what are they? There are special collector bags that you can buy. They're a lot, a lot more pricey. But for you know, for just for a couple of years, if you can store them until you have a, a permanent place, this is the snack bags are a great thing. The reason I say don't store them long term, like five, ten years, is because the the plastics that these bags are made of, these snack bags, they're never made to last as permanent collector item storage. Uh, so they break down eventually. The, well, I'm not going to say they definitely will break down. I need to do more research, but eventually they might be the type of plastic that breaks down. But they're great. I mean, this is really a nice way to keep these guys. Zip them, zip them tight, and uh, they work great for display. They hold everything nice. It's, they just give that extra bit of uh, extra bit of. They fill in that extra bit of space so that you can, you know, pack it up. Shake it up real good. Let's see if anything fell out. It made me look stupid. Nope. It's pretty good. So, uh, anyway, let me close this up and get on with the cleaning. So, again, like as I said, uh, in addition to the tips you probably already know about using dishwashing detergent to clean your action figures and using a brush and this and that, uh, hopefully the extra things I'm going to provide you with here will take your your vintage restorations to the next level. So here we are at the kitchen sink. Uh, we've got our filthy, dirty uh, Hoth Rebel Soldier, or Rebel Commander, whatever. Uh, I want to just show uh, everybody what I've done with this toothbrush here. This is just a cheapo, I think it was a dollar store toothbrush or something like that. Uh, so what I do is I took some scissors and I snipped down here. To, so this end is shorter and this end is longer. And the idea, probably you already know before I say it, uh, you know, the longer bristles are for the flat, large areas. You know, they just want to do a lot of get a lot of coverage. And the short bristles are for those more detailed areas. You want to dig in on the face uh, and some of this detailed stuff. I don't want to pull this so close to the camera that it gets out of focus. But if you can see these these very detailed areas in his back here, you want to really get in. And and see, I don't cut the bristles so short that they're gonna 
damage the paint. I, I don't know that they would anyway, but it's still, like, this is this is about as short as you need. This is nice and stiff, just run right about here. Um, it's about a centimeter or so. Um, anyway, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get right to work. So, you, um, what else should I say before I start scrubbing? Yeah, get the get the water nice and warm. We're gonna use uh, this is pretty warm. Not not so hot that it burns your hand. Just warm. It probably doesn't even make a difference. I'm gonna use just regular old. Uh, I got palm olive antibacterial here. You never know where these guys have been. I I got one case of these guys one time on Craigslist, and they were. It smelled like cigarette smoke, and then after I had paid for them, the guy disclosed to me that uh, the building that he lives in has a rat problem. Rat droppings everywhere. I was like, great, wonderful. So I always use antibacteria. Let's just put it that way. So you get in there, and uh, let's see if the camera can get this. You really want to get in there and just scrub everything down. Every Take your time. Pull the arms out like this, you see. Get under there. You know, Same thing with the legs. You want to get in that crotch area. Get one leg back, one leg forward. Same thing the other way. Pull, pull the legs the opposite directions. Make sure you get everything. Lots of coverage. And don't be afraid to use the short end. You know, use the, the long end to get all the large flat areas. And then get down in there with the, the short bristles. Just really, really dig deep. You know, you only want to do this once. You, only, you don't have to keep doing this every year. You know, you want to get this guy in perfect condition. And you never have to deal with this again. Another note is that uh, even on the large uh, flat areas uh, where I'm talking about using the, the larger bristles, you still want to use these short bristles to get out little little paint thing, little, uh, not paint, uh, dirt and things like that. You know, and, uh, these are really for scrubbing. If you really scrub hard, you can, you can get uh, yellowing out, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of nasty discoloration. You really want to get in there. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, a lot of time on old plastic, plastic begins to melt down. I don't know how many people know this, but plastic really, after, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, you might open a, a package uh, or open up an old bag uh, with some, uh, some action figures in it, and uh, you'll notice there's like a residue, uh, sometimes even just straight up liquid. It almost seems like there's some liquid in the... Uh, uh, like on the surface of the, the plastic figure, plastic PVC figure like this, or uh, an action playset or something. And it's actually the plastic itself has begun to break down. And it smells like, like cigarettes, you know? Um, it's, a, it's a weird smell. It's nasty. So uh, you might find that these, some of these older action figures are a little bit tacky to the touch. It's not the case with this guy. Not too much. But uh, in general, yeah, you might get an old vintage uh, Star Wars or G.I. Joe or Transformer. And it's kind of uh, just tacky, like a little bit sticky, like tape that's lost its stick. And, and that is, uh, that actually is the plastic and just whatever goo is on there. So you get in there with the toothbrush and really, really scrub good and get all that off. And I'll show you what the next step is. We're going to let this dry. I let it dry overnight. And I put his arms out like this so that the slots open up. Same thing with his legs. Have them open at different angles so that all the grooves and everything are exposed. And just leave them out like this. Like that. That's probably good like that. Okay, here we are. This little guy is completely dried. He's been drying overnight. As you saw moments ago, he was uh, completely cleaned uh, head to toe with uh, my custom toothbrush, uh, bristle brush, and antibacterial dishwasher detergent, dish, dish soap. Uh, again, remember antibacterial because you never know where these guys have been, like a rat infested apartment uh, from Craigslist, for example. Uh, so anyway, I like to have them dry completely overnight so that there's no water hiding in the cracks or seams anywhere. Uh, that's I, I find it necessary for this next step, which this next and final step, which I'm going to show you with this product here. Uh, you'll remember uh, moments ago in the video I mentioned that these action figures, whether they be Star Wars or Transformers or G.I. Joe, sometimes you'll open one up uh, or have one have them in a plastic bag hiding away for 20, 25 years or so. It, regardless uh, where you find it, but you'll find it with this sticky substance all over them, or they'll be tacky to the touch like I was describing, or even uh, a liquid all over them, like covered in like a clear liquid, and that funky smell I described, like that cigarette kind of smell. What I was referring to is the breakdown of the plastic itself. I wasn't trying to describe 
gunk and gook and nasty things that have gotten from the outside onto the figure to make it dirty, like exterior. What, what I was referring to is uh, that, that stickiness most often is actually the plastics, the plasticizers and chemicals within this PVC plastic seeping out of the plastic and, and leaking out onto the surface. It's a nasty process. Uh, you may, may not like to hear this, but all of your plastic action figures are currently melting down very slowly, but they are sort of decomposing, if you will. They're, they're melting down uh, slowly, kind of like, a, if you imagine it, like a slow-flowing liquid, this, you know, like silly putty, but even slower. Uh, so to halt the process, uh, I use, well, I use this brand, Black Magic. You can find it really cheap at, like, Walmart or somewhere like that. You don't have to use this brand. It's ProShine Protectant. So it's Black Magic ProShine Protectant. Mother's uh, detailing uh, product company, car, car detail. This is a pro car detailing product, I should point out. Uh, this is for a dashboard cleaner. There's a, there's a brand called Mothers. Uh, there's another brand called Armor All. Everybody's probably familiar with that. There's all kinds of brands out there. You don't have to use Black Magic. But what you're looking for is a dashboard cleaner. This is this is billed as a dashboard cleaner and protectant. Uh, what, what you really want to make sure is that somewhere on the package, somewhere on the label, it says that it's a restorative. The idea is this stuff, these products are designed by all the different de car detailing companies to restore sun-baked dashboards, sun-baked plastic and vinyl old dashboards. You know what a dashboard has been sitting in the sun for 20 years, you have a 20-year-old car or something like that, and your dashboard is cracked and brittle, or your vinyl seat covers are cracked and brittle and sun-baked. That's because the plasticizers in the plastic, that which, which make plastic, plastic, you know, flexible, uh, they've all seeped out or they've been burned out. Um, so the chemicals like, like this, products like this, will put the plasticizers back in. Now before you guys get all scared and people viewing this get nervous about me doing this to vintage figures, I spoke with a chemist recently about this uh, and he said this, it's absolutely okay. It doesn't, you're not changing uh, the molecular structure of the plastic. You're not changing your priceless vintage figures at all. They're, you know, they're not undergoing any sort of change. You're just adding the plasticizers back in the plastic and it helps restore it. And, and the nice thing is you shouldn't have to do this very often. This isn't something you do every year or every five years. This is a restorative process to make these things last, you know, hopefully longer than you last, you know. So, um, yeah, and, and the other thing, it's not, we're not just restoring this, uh, we're not just protecting the plastic. Uh, this product or whatever, whatever dashboard cleaner and restorative product you choose to use, uh, it makes it look shiny and it makes it look just like it looked back in 1981 or 82 or 77 when you first opened it out of the blister package. So um, I think that's all I need to say about that. I think I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start uh, polishing this guy up. So let's go ahead and do it. It, it only takes a minute to do. It's really quick. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Don't need to shake it or anything like that. I'll just put a little bit cloth. Actually, that was actually a lot, but it doesn't matter. Just get it all in there. I like to just rub it all over them first, and then we'll get in the cracks and things like that. You basically just kind of towel them off as if you had just gotten out of the shower and just, just get it all over everywhere. And you want to really, I like to really work it in. Just work it into into the plastic, you know. Same thing as you would do in your car. You know, you you get in there with, uh, I don't know if any anybody watching this has done any car detailing or detailed their own car, but you when you're using this kind of chemicals on your dashboard or fix, plastic fixtures or anything on the car, you really rub it in. It says to, to, to rub it in, to really, you know, buff it into the to the surface. Let's do one more squirt there. Okay. I'm gonna just use this last bit to get in underneath and get underneath his scarf, everything. Just turn the head around there. Get way in there. Get underneath the arms, everything. I just want to get every single little bit. And I'll show you what we're gonna do next. This is where you really this is what's gonna make the difference. I mean I, I showed you the comparisons of my already restored action figures like that Darth Vader or the Bespin Guard as compared to a figure that was just cleaned and, and put away. This is the difference. Okay, so now it's pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab him by the little toes there. I'm going to put his arms out again the same way I did 
when I was finished cleaning, I just get them in this kind of uh, position. <laughs> I don't know what I want to call this position here, but let's go. And I'm using the towel to touch them. I'm not using. I'm trying not to use my fingertips to touch them. Just on the boots here, somewhere where you won't notice. And I put them down like this to dry again for a few hours, maybe even overnight all over again. And the reason why is if you've ever, again, if you've ever detailed a car with this stuff, if you were to finish polishing your dashboard and then you just left the cloth right on there, what would that do? You know what it would do. It would leave this texture of the cloth. Or same thing with fingerprints. If you were to put a fingerprint on there somewhere, it's going to, you know, when it dries, that fingerprint will be in there. It's just like buffing a car, waxing a car surface or, or what have you. So we're going to try to touch them as, as minimally as possible with our fingertips here. Let's get all possible imprints and textures from the towel off. Just kind of rub it and just leave it like that. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave it for a couple hours. I, I might even leave it overnight. Uh, and then we'll come back and see how he looks. Uh, but you really want to have as few points touching any surface as possible. You don't want it to... Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, we'll be back. Okay. So it's been a few hours now. Uh, he is dry. He's ready to be handled. Uh, let's take a look. Let's get him out of his push-up position. Uh, at least I call it a push-up position, whatever. I guess you could come up with a different name. Let's just call it that. So, uh, yeah, um, if you look at the boots now, they have a much more polished sheen to them. Let me see if I can get this in focus here. I, I want to get close enough to see the difference. But here's, here's an existing. This is a guy I used, our, our friend from Bespin here. Uh, I used him as a comparison in the, earlier in the video. You can see he has this shine all over him, and now he does too, whereas earlier... I'll provide still photos, because it's hard to tell on video, but the still photos will really reveal the difference. Now these are identically shiny and, you know, polished looking. Uh, big difference. And as you can see, uh, he is the last one missing. See, Hoth Rebel Soldier. He was the last one missing uh, from a complete case set. This guy, I just took him out of here to... Uh, demonstrate but I'll put him back in so when I'm actually done with this video I'm excited to back him up and stick him stick him in the spot I finally have a complete case I just thought to uh, do this video since it was my last one my sort of my last chance at polishing one of these guys up so I brought out a, a bunch of other uh, items all of which have been treated with the same uh, the same treatment the dish soap and then uh, I'm trying to close in here so you can see uh, the quality, the shininess. Here's all the other characters that didn't fit in the case. Um, all of them have been treated with that uh, that uh, Pro Shine protectant. Here's the Death Star playset I got when I got this. It was actually new in the box. Uh, however, it was you know beat from 1977. Uh, filthy. I mean, absolutely filthy. This guy had it. I guess in his you know, a family member's attic or something. Uh, he took great care of it. The fact that it still had the box and everything was in bags, but it was still, just over the years, it was musty and filthy. Luckily, no decals had been applied, so I was able to disassemble everything. Well, it was disassembled. I was able to take all the unassembled pieces and submerge them in water and uh, scrub them all clean. I, uh, I, uh, I made my own. He actually had the original foam, which was totally deteriorated, but I still have it in a bag. Um, but I made, uh, I went online and found, uh, well, there's another video on how I created the replacement foam, but that foam is actually accurate. That's accurate, uh, replacement foam. Here's a transformer, uh, same treatment. All of my, uh, vintage transformers are treated with the same, uh, the same method that you saw me do, uh, to this guy here. Here's Megatron. Look at this. You know, I built this Megatron out of spare parts I got off of eBay. Look at this. I mean, I, I, I should have taken, taken before and after photos. Let me zoom out so, let me pull out rather so you can see it without being all blurry and unfocused. Look at that sh the, the shine on that. It did not look like that before. The only thing that betrays how it used to look before is the, you still, you see the sticker is still kind of muddled looking, but everything else looks brand new. And I actually have some replacement stickers on here. I haven't pulled this replacement, this old sticker or this old sticker off because it's, it's, it's intact enough that I don't think it's, it's good, a good idea to destroy it. I don't think that's, I don't know. I, I don't like that idea, but this is a replacement sticker. Anyway, um, Millennium Falcon, which you saw before. Another reason why I have these all laid out for you right now, <clears throat> it's not just to show off. 
Uh, there's some precautions you need to know about uh, before going ahead and doing what you saw me just do with uh, this action figure. Uh, and the main precaution is stickers, okay? I uh, Star Wars stickers are, there are, they actually are okay. So far I haven't had a problem. They're okay uh, with dish soap. You can, I disassembled the entire Millennium Falcon to protect the electronics. I didn't, and I wanted to get all the pieces nice and clean individually, you know, thorough. Uh, but I disassembled, disassembled the entire Millennium Falcon, took the two half shells, put them in the sink one at a time, and made sure to protect the electronics from getting wet. And the stickers survived. Um, but once you use that ProShine protectant, it just eats the stickers, the glue, right up. I mean, the, the stickers are intact, but the glue goes to hell. Same thing with this thing. So uh, if you're going to do Star Wars play sets, anything with actual stickers, any Star Wars Kenner stuff, I should say, not Hasbro, but the original vintage Kenner stuff uh, that has stickers on it, you're going to want to protect those stickers uh, bef before using the ProShine protectant, or just don't use ProShine protectant, or um, you might want to uh, do what I did and have a set of replacement stickers handy nearby. Uh, you can go to ericstormtrooper.com. I think that's right. You might have to Google it. He's got stickers you can print out yourself, or if you want the genuine, the high quality reproductions, you can get them on eBay for four bucks for the Millennium Falcon stickers. I think it's about four dollars for the Death Star playset. Same thing with the uh, Rebel Transport here. Um, but uh, uh, Hasbro's, uh, whether it's vintage or modern Transformers, the stickers are great. I, all these stickers, these original stickers, were hit with the ProShine protectant. They didn't move, they didn't budge, they, they stayed intact, no problem. These stickers look sort of metallic. They're much different uh, finish to these Transformer stickers than the, uh, than the paper Hasbro, uh, I'm sorry, the paper Kenner stickers. So Transformers, safe with ProShine protectant, dashboard cleaner. Uh, Star Wars, not so safe when it comes to stickers. Uh, so again, have some replacement stickers nearby, or make your own, or just avoid hitting the uh, hitting the the place the stickers themselves with the Pro Shine. That's that's actually what I did. This Rebel Transport got hit with Pro Shine. I just avoided the stickers. I went around the stickers. It's a little tough, but it's not it's not impossible. So uh, I believe that's it. I uh, hope that helps. I haven't seen anybody else using uh, this method yet. Maybe someone is and just hasn't gone online to talk about it. But I, I personally feel that it really embellished, uh, really improved uh, my collection. Really, uh, it seemed like it was the final touch, you know. Well, I think that's about all there is to say about this. So, uh, and uh, good luck, happy collecting, and thank you for watching.